Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to this talk by the OLM team for KubeCon um, North America 2021. In today's talk, we'll be discussing OLM catalogs and how a paradigm shift from imperative to declarative in the context of building OLM catalogs um, reduced the cost of building and maintaining catalog artifacts drastically. My name is Anik. Um, I'm a software engineer working at Red Hat, uh, primarily focusing on the Operator Lifecycle Manager project, commonly referred to as OLM. <clears throat> I'm joined by my teammate, Joe, who's a principal software engineer, also working at Red Hat, who is also a part of the OLM team. In today's presentation, I will be going over a short refresher on, on what an operator is. Then I'll be covering a short refresher on what the Operator Lifecycle Manager project is about. I will then talk about what OLM catalogs are and then discuss what the current catalog building process looks like. I'll also be showcasing some of the pain points involved in building catalogs in the current imperative way. Joe will then talk about the new declarative solution for building catalogs and how it manages to ease the pain points of building imperative catalogs, and in the process showcase a significant reduction in cost the new solution enabled for everyone involved in building and maintaining catalogs. Finally, we will close out with a demo of the new workflow for building catalogs. So let's begin with a short refresher on operators. Um, operators were first introduced by CoreOS um, as, as a concept for a special class of software. They're basically application-specific controller that extends the Kubernetes API to create, configure, and manage instances of stateful applications on behalf of Kubernetes users. It builds upon the basic Kubernetes resource and controller concept, but includes domain or application-specific knowledge to automate common tasks. So when you talk about any software, you need a way to manage the lifecycle of the software, at least in the context of enterprise softwares. This is where the Operator Lifecycle Manager project comes into play. Um, the Operator Lifecycle Manager project is a component of the Operator framework which is an open source toolkit to manage the lifecycle of operators in a streamlined and scalable way. OLM extends Kubernetes to provide a declarative way to install, manage, and upgrade operators on a cluster. Um, it provides a way to make operators and the services available for cluster users to select and install. Essentially, um, OLM enables operators to behave like managed services providers through the APIs they expose. And it has built-in mechanisms to ensure cluster stability while those operators are being used on cluster. These features are enabled by allowing operators to express dependencies on specific platforms and on other operators, together, together with the help of rich update mechanisms to keep operators up to date automatically via over the air updates to catalogs. So catalogs, what are they? To discuss catalogs, we first have to go over what an operator bundle is. Um, an operator bundle is essentially all the manifest that defines the bundle that defines the operator version packaged in a directory. So what do I mean by the manifests um, that define the bundle? So as you can see here, um, it, it's basically a directory that contains all the man all, all the manifests. Um, and it's basically a Docker file, and it has two folders. So the first folder, the manifest uh, folder uh, directory contains kubectl applicable YAML manifest, including the custom resource definitions that the XCD operator owns, um, the cluster service version, which is an API exposed by OLM that allows the XCD operator to relay various information to OLM with. And we'll see a few examples of these informations in the next few slides. And other core group resources like config maps and services. The metadata directory um, contains application metadata, including the name of the operator version, um, the version and, and package information, including dependencies. So the dependencies that I mentioned um, on on app, on platforms and other other operators, um, they are um, expressed through the dependencies on YAML file. So this this directory um, fully defines version zero point six point one of the etcd operator. And once you have that folder. Um, it's basically Kate's, those Kate's manifest packaged in container images and then stored in a container registry. Um, that is what is what we mean by an operator bundle and an operator bundle image. Um, 
So now that we've covered what an operator bundle is um, and how operator bundles are expressed for OLM, how do I make a catalog of these operator bundles? Um, essentially, a catalog or an OLM catalog is a collection of references to these operator bundle images that I talked about. Um, and we'll talk about how these uh, how, how they are added to this database um, more in the next few slides. Um, essentially, like I said, it's a, it's a SQLite database that contains all the operator, all the information about operator bundles in that catalog. Um, so like I mentioned, um, in, in OLM, you can, uh, you can have, uh, you can mention upgrade graphs for your operator. For example, the HCD v.0.6.1 um, can upgrade to v.0.6.2. Um, and so in the operator bundle table, you would have these two bundles stored. Um, and in the channel, for example, you can mention that both those um, bundles belong in the alpha channel. Um, so in the channel table, we'll have the information about the alpha channel. Um, in the channel entry table, we'll have information about um, the bo both the versions belonging to the alpha channel. Um, so basically, all of the information that is required to define each bundle and the relation between other bundle versions for your operator, um, all of that information is stored in this database. This database, the SQLite database, is then packaged um, into a runnable container image. So we can see an example of the Docker file here. Uh, it's basically this index.database uh, that is being copied and pasted into the container image. Um, and, and the contents of this database is then served with a, with a, with a command um, that we'll talk about more in the next few slides um, over a gRPC API. Um, so once you have this, uh, <coughs> Cluster. Once you have this um, catalog source image, uh, once you have this catalog image, the way we introduce it in the cluster is through the catalog source API. So you can see in in over here in highlighted in the red box. That's my catalog image. Um, and once I create this catalog source um, with this catalog image, what I get is a registry pod, uh, essentially a pod um, that starts up, that exposes the content of that SQLite database over the gRPC API. And anybody can query for the for the content um, of the SQLite database through that API endpoint. So an example of that is the package manifest API, which also is owned by OLM, um, that leverages this API endpoint um, to, to let users discover what operators are available to install in there. And on, on their cluster, um, so you can do kubectl get manifest to see what cluster what operators are available to install on your cluster. Now, how is this database created? Um, so the operator registry project, also a component of the operator framework, um, is where uh, we originally house all the tools um, that were used to create and manipulate this database. So the project started off with um, and it uh, with a array of binaries. Um, it had the initializer binary, the register server, config map server, and all of this did their own job. So for example, the initializer um, initiated um, or created a new SQLite database. Um, and then we were we had commands to add uh, the directory uh, that I showed earlier of bundle inside that database. Um, all the information from that directory would get pulled into that database. The registry server command um, would then, uh, our binary would then, um, use the database to expose the content of that database over the gRPC API. Um, so we had a lot of binaries going on, but with the introduction of Opera Bundle and the, with the introduction of the concept of storing these directories of uh, bundles in container registries, um, OPM was introduced to bring in, to house all of these operations under the same tool um, and also work on container images. Um, So the way OPM started off was it was pretty simple in the beginning. Um, it had the registry sub command and the index sub command, and both of those had the add rm and serve command. Um, the add would just add the operator bundle. So once you have it in a container registry, an image reference, you would pass that on to OPM uh, registry or OPM index add, and that would in extract the information from the from the bundle image and store that in the database. The RM would remove an entire operator. So if you you could add v.0.6.1 and v.0.6.2 of etcd operator using add, but you could do but you had to do OPM RM 
etcd. So the entire operator and all the versions that are included in that operator would get removed from the database using the rm command. Um, and finally, you have the serve command uh, that would, again, serve the content of that database over the gRPC API. So with the introduction of the new command, um, we had to build out processes for building these catalogs. Um, so imagine you have a catalog um, called the cool catalog. Um, obviously, you have a team responsible for uh, building this catalog and maintaining this catalog. And then you have the etcd operator team, Prometheus operator team, and a lot of other operator teams who wants to include their operator or who wants to make their operator available on cluster for users um, through your catalog. So they would submit, they would first build the bundle, um, each bundle that they have um, in their operator upgrade graph, and they would submit that to the team responsible for creating the cool catalog. And the team, the cool catalog team would then use OPM index add um, over the bundle images that were submitted to them to create the cool catalog. Uh, image essentially that, that was fine but imagine imagine a scenario where um, the operator team makes a mistake and wants to replace the bundle in the catalog so so suppose I make a mistake etcd team makes a mistake on v.0.6.1 and wants to replace that um, the pipeline team then had to uh, opm index rm um, the etcd operator entirely from the catalog and then rebuild the bundle. And the reason that we had to rebuild all the bundles is because v.6.2 would have a reference to v.6.1 of the etcd operator. Um, think about it as, uh, as, a, as a link list. Um, and v.6.2 is where it would say, we would say that we this version replaces v.6.1. So we had to rebuild all the bundles and then OPM index add all the bundles uh, individually to that, um, to that catalog. That was still fine. Um, but now imagine a scenario where an operator team wants to include a CV for an existing bundle um, um, or wants to add or wants to replace the bundle in the catalog. So the like I mentioned, the pipeline team had to rebuild all of the bundle images, remove the operator from the catalog, and then re-add all the bundles. Um, imagine now that the pipeline team is getting a request to do this for 10, 20 operators out of the 100 operators that you have inside Cool Catalog. Certainly not a fun time for, for the cool catalog team. So this is when a request came in um, for OPM uh, for adding a new sub command called prune. Um, that would prune all of the all of the uh, that would get rid of all of the packages uh, or all of the operators in the catalog except for the ones specified. That only helped a little bit. Um, it didn't help all of the pain points that I described earlier though. Um, now imagine another scenario where uh, Operator team wants to add a bundle in the middle of the upgrade graph. So this is, again, where we have to rebuild all the bundles um, because we have to mention the replaces for each. Um, we have to edit the replaces for each bundle that would come up after that bundle. Um, and again, like I said, think about this as a linked list. Um, and you're adding an item in the middle of the linked list. So you would have to rebuild all of that linked list item, um, in our case, container images, R OPM index RM, the operator, and then rebuild all the rebuild or re-add all the bundles inside the index. So this is when another request came in um, to add a substitute for field in the cluster service version API that I mentioned earlier. Essentially, this would add a new field in your database. Um, and you could mention through this cluster service version, the new bundle um, that would be a substitute for the old bundle. Um, now, imagine another requirement coming in from um, another team where they said that, OK, we released a bundle earlier, but now we want to deprecate that bundle. And therefore, all of the bundles that came in later um, in the upgrade graph after that bundle would have to be removed so that users cannot ins upgrade to that bundle. Um, in the current scenario that I mentioned, the cool catalog team had no way of doing that. Um, this is where deprecate. Uh, this is where the request came in to add another subcommand called the deprecate truncate. Um, for the lack of a better name, uh, which would deprecate a bundle and then truncate the upgrade graph, i.e. remove all of the bundles um, that came after that bundle from the upgrade graph. So as you can see, um, imagine, uh, imagine I, I was just talking about the cool catalog, but imagine three, four catalog 
being built and then um, all each catalog um, being the responsibility of each team um, of an individual team. Each team would then have come up with new, their unique way of building and maintaining these catalogs and therefore they would have their unique requirements um, for how OPM should behave or for how that tool should um, let them handle the or maintain the catalog. Um, and as you could see, the we kept getting requests um, for increasing, for adding more and more subcommands to OPM, and that increased the surface area of the OPM subcommands. And we all know, with more code comes more bug uh, that we all needed to maintain. Um, so this is where I will hand over to Joe, who will talk about how we solve this problem with the new solution. Joe, I think you're muted. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So, as Anik was saying, like we, we got into this really difficult situation um, where, like, all these um, operator authors and pipeline teams that were building catalogs would continue asking for more and more features. And you know, we got to this. We're almost to this point now where. You know, adding a new feature is going to add another three or four bugs on an unrelated feature that you know um, is, is difficult to maintain and kind of keep everything in, on track. So, so what we came up with is a brand new format for the underlying um, index, which is just declarative plain text files stored in a directory structure. So now every um, every package, so every operator team, so you might have an etcd operator, you might have Prometheus operator, all of those. Um, operators can store their own package level metadata uh, for their index now just in a plain text YAML or JSON file. And this is, uh, so the OPM tool has now been updated to, to support this new plain text format. The SQLite database format has been deprecated and we're gonna try to migrate um, a lot of the catalog usage over to this new declarative format uh, to alleviate a lot of these problems that Anik was talking about. Uh, so, so this is just a, a short example of what something looks like. You, you have a couple of like root level schemas. Here we see like an olm.package, which has package level metadata, the name of the package, the default channel for the package, a description for it. Uh, and then you can start listing other things like an olm.bundle, um, which is just an index representation of that bundle image. So we have the, the name of the CSV that was in the bundle. We have the package that this bundle is a member of. Uh, we have an image reference, which uh, OLM can use uh, to unpack that image and find those manifests and metadata uh, that Anik was showing before. And then we have a list of properties that the um, OLM resolver can use to make decisions about, um, you know, what can I install? What dependencies do I need to have installed? Um, what can't I install because the dependencies aren't, aren't met? That kind of thing. Uh, so now all of this stuff is stored in plain text and uh, operator authors can now you know, have the control to, to make changes declaratively um, based on what they need their index to look like. So the issues that Anik was explaining about, um, you know, inserting into a linked list of an upgrade graph, now is just cracking open this index file and inserting the changes in the right way, um, rather than having to do this imperative workflow of removing the whole thing and then re-adding everything in order. Um, so there's a lot of motivation behind this. I think some of it is kind of obvious already from what Anik has been talking about, but the three main things that we were looking for are editability, composability, and extensibility. So um, I kind of what I was just explaining from an editability standpoint, uh, now both operator authors and catalog authors can, or catalog maintainers can directly edit the contents of the index. They don't have to rely on a tool like OPM that has just a very specific set of things that it knows how to change about the index, uh, they can go and make arbitrary changes. So this, this opens the door for like lots of new use cases, right? Um, one case would be, you know, I, I want to make sure that this bundle that I already added a long time ago, I wanna add it to a new channel. So I can just go into my um, index plain text file and add it to a new channel, done. And before, you would have to basically rebuild that bundle image, delete the entire um, package from the index, and then rebuild the entire index uh, with that new bundle image that has that new index reference, or the new channel reference. 
um, composability. So now what we can do, uh, because this is organized as like a, an arbitrary directory structure, there's not a single source of truth for like the entire contents of the catalog. Now what happens is operator authors can uh, build just, just an index that contains just their package. Um, and then uh, there's kind of two ways you could do this. You could have a catalog that says like, oh, well, um, I want to maintain a list of references to other indexes that already exist, and I'll just copy those into my larger catalog. So now basically we can have this composability um, feature where you can build indexes of indexes of indexes uh, just by copying more sub indexes into your index. Uh, and then lastly with extensibility, because this is a plain text format, it's JSON or YAML. Uh, there's lots of programming languages out there. There's lots of tools out there that understand JSON and YAML. Uh, so it's, it's really easy for uh, both operator authors and catalog maintainers to build their own tooling on top of the schema and format uh, and come up with things that the OLM team either hasn't come up with or has decided is too niche of a concern for the larger OPM um, tooling to, to maintain and use. Uh, but it gives um, all of these other users an escape hatch to build their own kind of workflows around this low lying schema. Um, so, so we've got looks like maybe five or six um, commands new for OPM that are um, supporting this new file-based catalog format. So uh, a couple are just kind of really straightforward. So like OPM init, all it does is it just generates that uh, olim.package blob for a package. You give it a, a package name and you can specify some flags for specifying the default channel, an icon or a description, and it'll just generate an output on standard out just the olim.package blob. And you can then you know pipe that into a, a YAML file. You can pipe that through um, a, a YQ or JQ to make some edits. It, it's kind of this um, Unix way of doing things where you know it'll print it to standard out and then it's up to the user to decide how to use that. Render is the same sort of thing, uh, except that it takes an existing index image or a bundle image or uh, a, an old SQLite file um, and produces the equivalent file-based catalog for, for that content. So this is nice because all of that existing content out there that's in an SQLite-based index image or in an SQLite file can just be readily converted over to uh, this new file-based catalog format just by running OPM render the index image that you want to convert. And then again, this will just spit that entire thing out on standard out, and, it, and then you can write you can directly redirect that into a file uh, and package that into a new file-based catalog index, or you can pipe that through some other tools and maybe split things out based on each package. Um, OPM validate, so this is a key tool that um, is, is super important for the file-based catalog. Uh, the difference in file-based catalogs is that uh, you don't have, like when you make edits to a plain text file, you, like there's no way of ensuring that every single edit is valid. With OPM and the SQLite-based indexes, OPM could guarantee that any changes made to the database were valid based on OPM's code or based on um, the database schemas that were underlying those commands. So with file-based catalogs, we need a validate command that, that users can use such that when they make changes to their file-based config, uh, they can run this OPM validate command that'll tell them if what they have built is actually a valid catalog. Um, OPM serve, this is basically the equivalent of the OPM registry serve command for SQLite databases, except this knows how to read um, a source directory that contains file-based catalogs. Um, it serves the exact same gRPC API. It's fully backward compatible, so you don't have to use a new version of OLM to use this. Um, any version of OLM that works with the gRPC API will work with uh, file-based catalogs as well via this OPM serve command. Then we have a couple of alpha commands. These are still subject to change. That's why we've got them under the alpha subcommand. But um, so alpha diff is basically a, a tool that you can send like an old and a new ref in. It does pretty much what it says, uh, and it'll tell you what changed uh, in in between the old reference and the new reference. And these references, are, again, are basically index images um, 
or reference or like you know declarative config directories. And then lastly, there's an OPM alpha generate Docker file. This kind of takes the place a little bit of OPM index add, uh, which in the past OPM would try to um, manage your images for you. And it had underlying tooling and configuration to let you decide um, to push and pull images with certain um, container tools. So for instance, uh, OPM index add has a flag that says uh, push like pull tool equals Docker and push tool equals Podman. And then OPM would actually invoke Docker and Podman uh, for those pull and push actions. We've decided um, based on lots of feedback and, and lots of real world usage that trying to maintain these, these image push and pull kind of workflows directly in OPM is not very maintainable. So um, the alternative that we've come up with is basically like, let's just have a command that generates a Docker file um, that knows how to publish your catalog for you. And then it's up to you then to, to go to the next step basically and invoke whatever your tool of choice is, rather, whether it's Docker, or Builda, or Podman. Um, so let's look at kind of what this new catalog building workflow is. So, so right now we're seeing kind of how this used to work, right? This is what Anik was explaining earlier. Um, operator teams would submit bundle references and they would only submit bundle references. So, so a bundle would basically have to fully explain every change that, that would possibly want to be made to a catalog. And then the uh, cool catalog maintainers would run OPM index add and OPM index add would have to know how to interpret that bundle and update uh, the catalog appropriately. So now what we can do is we can say that each operator team now maintains their own GitHub repos or Git repos or directories or you know however they want to organize uh, their directory of index metadata. And they can they can do a couple things. They can push that they can they can well they they need to push their bundle images like they always have uh, to a container registry. Um, and then when they go and talk to the, the catalog, um, they can just basically make declarative changes to their operators in their package-based index um, and submit pull requests potentially to the catalog that says, you know, here's the changes I wanna make to my index. Um, there's another option where an, an operator team could say, we wanna maintain our own index repository and maybe the catalog says, well, that's fine. Like, just tell us a referent, like tell us where your index repository is and then we'll pull from that. So there's lots of new workflows that we um, are opening up by having this composability kind of thing that I was explaining earlier. Um, the, the other nice thing here is that now we can build some interesting kind of CI CD workflows, right? So when the SCD operator team publishes a pull request to the cool catalog, um, that cool catalog might have some GitHub actions, for, for example, that run OPM validate, um, maybe that check that the the author of the pull request is in the owner's file for uh, basically has the permission to update that particular package in the catalog, um, or at least requires a review from one of the the maintainers of that package, um, and it also can you know build the entire new index based on that pull request, validate the entire index with OPM validate potentially spin up a Kubernetes cluster, install OLM, and attempt to uh, you know, install, pack, install operators out of that package. So there's lots of interesting kind of CI workflows that we can build on top of this new format. Uh, and then lastly, at the very end of this, you know, if, if all of that passes, then the cool catalog could say, you know. Hey, no. Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt, I don't know if you're trying to change slides, but the slides are not changing. That's okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll get, I'll get to the next slides. I, I just want to finish my thought here. So the last thing is that once the entire CI has passed and we merge that PR into the main branch, um, we can actually build a new image for that. So we have some examples of what this looks like, right? So we have this cool catalog repo. It's just an example, um, but it kind of demonstrates how all of this could work. So in this case, we've got just uh, a single operator. We've got this Etsy folder. Um, we've got a Docker file, and we've got some GitHub workflows, right? So um, the the current SCD index is just got a single version in it. It, it we declare our OLM package, name it SCD. We've got 0 0.6.1. So now we decide, okay, we've got an SCD 
0.9.4 bundle that we want to add to our index. So we render that. We can see what it looks like on our output. Um, we call render again. We redirect it into, you know, just cat it to the end of our index file. Uh, and then we submit a pull request, right? So we've just added some lines to our index file. Um, this is what the rendered output looks like there. We've submitted this pull request to the cool catalog and we say like, hey, we want the index to be updated such that uh, this new 0.9.4 version is available to users who are using this catalog in their cluster. Um, so then, you know, it goes through that CI and review process that I was explaining. Um, we've got some uh, GitHub actions that uh, basically can build the image and push the image to a cluster. And then at the end of this run, after this thing is merged, um, we've got a brand new catalog image pushed that has this uh, 0.9.4 version available. Um, so at that point then, users of, of this catalog will potentially get an automatic update if they've pinned to a tag that we're updating, or they can go and add it. You know, if they don't have this catalog yet in their cluster, they can um, add a catalog via a catalog source, and, and now they'll be able to install uh, the etcd 0.9.4 version. So um, there's lots of resources here. We're, we're constantly updating our documentation. If you go to the olim.operatorframework.io website, we've got all the docs, um, and, and there's lots of docs about this new file-based catalog. If you want to check out the uh, this example cool catalog workflow, here's the link to that. It's just operatorframework slash cool catalog in GitHub. Um, and then if you have if you're interested in OLM and you want to join the OLM or the operator framework community, uh, we'd be super interested. We're a CNCF incubation project. Uh, we have weekly meetings um, between just kind of open public working group meetings and then issue triage meetings. Um, if you're interested in discussing anything with us at those, we'd be happy to have you. And then we also have a, an, a mailing list. Um, so we're interested in you know hearing what you think about the project. If you have questions or comments and want to talk to us there, awesome. Um, if you want more live chat discussion, we've got an OLM dev channel in the uh, Kubernetes Slack. And then there's always you know, the full listing of ways to get in touch with us in the OLM community page. Um, so we're, we're super interested in getting more eyes on this project and more contributors to the project. Um, so we welcome um, any contribution uh, from the community that we can get. And I think that's all I've got. Um, Anik, did you have anything else? Yeah, no, just thanks for joining everybody. Um, uh, we'll be sticking around to answer any of our questions. Uh, so we'll talk to you there. Thank you. Thanks.